Recently, I went on a family vacation, and on our way back, we stopped at the Air Mobility Command Museum at Dover Air Force Base. Now, it's a very cool museum where you can see a lot of really cool but retired military aircraft, and it has a very interesting history. Each aircraft has its own unique history. And so I was in the gift shop, and I saw Gemini Max models, so of course, I had to get it. And I'm gonna show you guys the models in three, two, one. Now, I did get two, and the first one is this. This is the Gemini Max uh, Lockheed C5 Galaxy. I actually walked inside of this exact same uh, model. Uh, in real life, I walked inside of it because it was at the museum, so I had to get this one. And then I also decided to get uh, this Dover C-17 Globemaster 3. Now, these two I got for $30 each. I got these for a total of 60 Now, this is an absolute steal. $60 for two models. Now, I did walk inside this one. This one I just decided to get because I want, I've wanted a Dover C-17 forever. And yeah, I finally got it. So, um... This is my first Gemini Max models. I haven't even opened the models yet. I haven't even opened the boxes or anything. But uh, yeah, before we take a look at the models, let's take a look at the boxes. So starting with the uh, Gemini C5 Galaxy on the front, you have limited edition collectible. Uh, you have the clip out of the aircraft, the uh, tail flash, which is MAC, uh, made for collectors by collectors, Gemini Max. And here you have the look inside flap. Here is the look inside flap. You guys can pause the video to look at it. Yeah, there's the look inside flap, and on the side you have a Gemini Max 1 to 400 scale collectible model, just all the reasons why you should buy Gemini Max. On this side you have the clip out of the aircraft, the type of aircraft, Gemini Max, and you have the tail flash, uh, the type of tail flash, which is a uh, MAC. And then on the front of the model you have adult collectible model, blah blah blah, uh, barcode, Gemini Max, and on the... Uh, right left side of the model you have the same as the right side of the model and of course on the back of the model uh you have the lockheed t5 galaxy you have the clip out of the aircraft to the catch gemini max uh lockheed martin trademarks and of course this is a 2016 release model this is actually the oldest gemini jet that i have i think uh, if the Dover C-17 is the same year, this is one of the oldest Gemini Jets models that I have. But, uh, yeah, before we open it, uh, we, we let's take a look at the other uh, model that I got. This is the Dover C-17 Globemaster 3. It's the same as the other C-5 that I just showed you guys. Uh, you have the type of aircraft on the 400 scale clip out of the aircraft. The Dover flashes, Dover tail flashes, made for collectors by collectors, Gemini Max. And here... You have uh, the flap. You guys can pause the video to read it. There was the flap. And yeah, even on the inside, they showed the uh, Dover uh, Air Force Base tail flash, which is very nice. Uh, on the right side of the box, you have Gemini Max, Dover tail flash, C-17, the type of aircraft, the clip part of the aircraft. And on the front of the box, you have Gemini Max, it'll collectible, the barcode. On the right side of the box is the same as the left side, the left and right are the same. And you of course have the Dover tail flashes. And then on the bottom of the box you have Gemini Max and it is a 1 to 400 scale collectible model. Now let's take a look at the back of the box. I don't know if this is the same with all Gemini Max models. Uh, but the back looks pretty much the same as the uh, C5. Uh, Boeing C-17 Globemaster 3, you have the type of aircraft clip out of the aircraft, as well as a catch, Gemini Max. And on the bottom, this is a 2015 Gemini Jets release. So this is actually officially the oldest Gemini Jet that I have in my collection. Now, I do have a uh, Ethiopian 767-300F that was uh, custom into a cargo jet, but I don't talk about that one. That was noise. That one was released in 2002, but this is the oldest Gemini Max model that I have and probably may or may not be the last. But uh, yeah, before we open the uh, smaller model, let's open the bigger one. This is the uh, Lockheed C5 Galaxy. Now, these models, I did buy them with stands. The stands came in the models. You didn't have to pay any extra money for them. Both of these models did come with the uh, stands and I'll link in the description the uh, Air Force uh, Air Mobility Command Museum website so you guys can get these for yourselves. But, uh, yep.
Sorry, technical difficulties. Um, yeah, now let's open the box for the Lockheed C5. Now, I'm so happy I was able to go to the museum, but I actually got to walk inside of this model, and that was, that was really, really cool. But, um, oh. So, this is the model, and it appears to be stuck inside the box. I'll move the camera so you guys can see. It, it's like stuck inside, it's really, really hard stuck inside the box uh because basically i don't know why they do this um you don't need to do this gemini they, they do this thing to help keep the model secure but the, the, the fuselage on the c5 is so big that you don't need to uh secure it so yeah um let's put the boxes to the side and let's also open the stand before we start the detail segment for the model and this is uh, it's a plastic, it's not plastic, it's not the Gemini's wooden stand, it's a metal stand. Um, it's a metal stand, and I think this is made of aluminum the stand, uh, but it's debatable how much this is going to hold a two and a half pound uh, C5. Now, the problem with this model is, I don't know if you guys can see this, the model is so heavy in the back that it tends to go up like this, so I can see why they give you a stand. But, uh, still, that's kind of not that good on Gemini's part, because, like, you don't want a bobbing up and down model. But, uh, yeah, that being said, let's get on to the detail segment for this C5 Galaxy. Starting off with the detail segment for this model, we have the, uh, black nose, cockpit windows, uh, you have the loading doors for the front of the aircraft, now, um, I don't know why they didn't make this one interactive. This would be really cool having an interactive nose going up, but, uh, that's just my opinion. Now, um, yeah, you have the cargo doors, you have all the markings. I think this is a serial number, uh, some other sort of pattern, U.S. Air Force, uh, moving on down the aircraft. You have the cockpit windows, that's something there. It's too small, I can't read it. You have a door here. I think this is for the upper deck of the aircraft. Now, the C5 is divided into two decks. You have the upper deck and the lower deck. I'll explain more about that later. Uh, 46 MAW, US Air Force. And moving on down the aircraft, uh, on the bottom of the aircraft, you actually have a cargo door right here. And you have a, another, uh, not cargo door, uh, normal passenger doors here. Uh, you have two of them right here, and continuing down the aircraft, we have the uh, two more passenger doors, and then on the back it says Military Airlift Command, we have the old U.S. Air Force emblem, and here we have the American flag, MAC, which I'm assuming means Military Airlift Command, the registration is 90014, and you have, I believe this is a different, the division that it's in, I believe, now this aircraft does not have any, um, Antennas, I don't know why that is. I think this is bef before the days Gemini started putting on antennas But uh, yeah, the top of the aircraft looks pretty bland without antennas uh, But the wings uh, as you can see it's a white design and then on the wings uh, It's gray and on the top of the wings. It says United States Air Force USAF and uh, Yeah, let's look inside the engines looking inside the engines um, Just like any other Gemini jets model you can see the turbo fans and yeah, I honestly do like this design uh, with the with this model. I honestly do like uh, the design with the white. You have the black stripes stretching all the way from the black nose all the way down to the gray. So the gray is the bottom of the fuselage. The whole time, whole entire bottom of the fuselage is gray. And on the bottom of the wings, you have the USAF emblem, another USAF emblem, but this is just in letters. Uh, Gemini Max, it says on the bottom of the aircraft, so we'll focus, okay, and yeah, the bottom of the aircraft, it really is an interesting, uh, the C5 actually has two sets of four front landing gear, uh, compared to one, usually on normal military aircraft, because this thing is just so heavy and so big, uh, now, this is, this is really crazy how much landing gear is here, uh, it, it's ridiculous. You have two in the front, two in the front. So you have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty-two, two, two. You have twenty-four sets of back landing gear. Jeez, and the doors are just 
absolutely huge the doors are right here and yeah this is this is one really really big model and uh on the back of the aircraft you they drew onto the aircraft the um the uh backwards uh, loading doors now this aircraft is a very very interesting aircraft um in real life because uh basically lockheed actually had problems with the aircraft when they were developing it in the late 60s and early 70s because uh what basically happened was this thing was so expensive to manufacture that uh, Lockheed almost went bankrupt, not only because of this, but because of the L-1011 TriStar. This, combined with that, caused Lockheed to go bankrupt, and the U.S. government actually had to bail out Lockheed. But despite all of this, this aircraft is absolutely huge. Um, in real life, we, we went on a tour of the aircraft. We were able to go inside this exact same registration aircraft, N90014. And so basically... The aircraft is divided into two decks. You have an upper deck up here in the in the upper part of the aircraft, and then the bottom part of the aircraft you have a lower deck, which is uh, really really huge. Like this aircraft is about the length of a football field. It's really massive, and um, yeah, the bottom can hold a bunch of tanks, while the top could be also used for fuel or passenger transport. Now everything on this plane is recycled. They even recycle the uh, hot air from the fuel to heat the aircraft and help pressurize the aircraft. Everything on this aircraft is recycled because it is just so big. And th this this thing is quite huge. I'll get uh, maybe a good comparison could be maybe my United 7 This thing is about the size of a United 7 this is the 7373 for, for comparison. This is a really, really, really big, uh, very, very massive aircraft. And I can see why uh, the US military would want it because this thing can transport tanks, it can transport personnel, it can refuel. This is just an all around uh, really cool aircraft. This is also very, very slight, but because of the way the model is so tightly packaged, the paint is very slightly dented. The model itself isn't, but the paint is very, very slightly dented. I don't know if you guys can see this. My camera isn't really getting uh, a good look on it, but it's, it's very slightly noticeable, but uh, it's nothing of major concern. Now, uh, let's put this to the side. We'll leave it in the back there. And now, let's go to open our Dover C-17. Now, let's get out the Dover C-17 and let's unbox that. Now, the Dover C-17 does come with a stand, too. Uh, the stand is included with the $30 purchase price of each model. Uh, now, I personally did think that this was a steal, getting uh, these two models, the C5 and a Dover C17, for $60, including metal stands. And personally, in my mind, that was just an absolute steal. So, of course, I got it. But uh, like I said before, but uh, yeah, now let's unbox the uh, C17. Um, now, I hope the packaging on the C17 isn't going to be like uh, the one before with the C5, where it was absolutely squeezed in. But, uh, yeah. Okay, it's just normal Jemaya just packaging. And, wow, here is the model. It's packaged quite nicely. It's nothing, uh, nothing too special with the packaging. But, uh, yeah, this thing is actually significantly smaller than the, uh, Lockheed, uh, C5. Um, I think a 757 will be good for comparison. This is my United 75. It's actually, um, it's actually quite a small aircraft, uh, the C-17, um, in real life, of course, it's massive, but it's only about the size of a 757, which I was actually kind of surprised, uh, when I learned about that in real life, but, um, yeah, this is the model, and now let's start with the detail segment, so starting off with the detail segment for this model, we have the, sorry, just, uh, gotta get, okay, starting off with the detail segment for this model, we have the cockpit windows, I believe this is the serial number of the aircraft or the register number or something like that 7174 this is uh 436th air wing 512th air wing u.s air force emblems uh forward landing gear uh u.s air force logo i believe this is supposed to be the different air wing logos uh up here you have a entrance door and on the bottom of the aircraft i believe this is a personnel loading door along with this one right here and let's zoom out a little bit 
the wings i don't really like how gemini did this with the wings it, it it doesn't feel natural it doesn't look or feel natural with the way uh it's separated from the fuselage i didn't like how i don't like how gemini does that and it kind of kind of makes me kind of ticks me off how gemini does that but uh yeah, this thing is absolutely massive, first of all. It's an absolutely awesome model. But uh, yeah, you have the fan blades inside of the engines, as you guys can see. And on the wings, you have the uh, new U.S. Air Force logo painted in gray and the U.S. Air Force uh, letters here. Now, this is the uh, third ver third generation of their C-17 Globemaster series. Um this is the third generation, so obviously this isn't a first generation model. But uh, yeah, this model was released in 2015. Better days for Gemini. But uh, yeah, uh, there's no antennas on this model, which I kind of find a bit disappointing. But uh, yeah, let's continue down the model. Moving on down the model, you have, I believe this is a maintenance door or something like that. Um, is that is that, simple? Is that natural? What? Oh, okay. Um... Here you have these bumps coming down. I don't know what these what this is. It's uh, it's on the opposite side of the model too, in the exact same place. I don't know if this is uh for its real life counterpart too, or if it's just Gemini being Gemini, but uh, with their molds. But uh, yeah, here we have a. Uh, I believe this is a personnel loading door, and you have another uh, what you call it, uh, personnel door. Moving on down the model, you, we have the. Uh, USAF logo, and on the tail, you have the, uh, US flag, AMC, which stands for the Air Mobility Command, you have the Dover Flash, and I believe this is the registration, which is 77174, uh, and now it's, it's, inter it's interesting what Gemini did, because on the top of the model, they actually, for the, for the beacon, they actually installed, I don't th I think, it's, is this a crystal? They installed, like, some sort of piece of reflective plastic on the top of the model, so, uh, yeah, I gotta give Gemini credit, that's, that's pretty good on Gemini's part for them to do that, but, but then again, this was, uh, Gemini in their golden days, uh, but, uh, yeah, moving on to the bottom of the model, here we have the forward landing gear, which unlike the, uh, up here unlike the lockheed c5 which has well not only is it standing up because it's so heavy but uh the two landing gear in the front this one only has one landing gear here up front and down here we have is this oh my god gemini you did a bad job on this um you, we have four sets of three landing gear each so it's three 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 six nine twelve sets of landing gear and uh, here we have the Gemini Max logo. And actually, this is kind of like Gemini's interactive model. This is kind of like Gemini's interactive models because uh, this is this door comes out like this. So that's that's pretty nice. Good job, Gemini. Um, that's actually pretty good. Uh, the front one comes out and then this one comes out, but not all the way. I don't really want to um, push the model that much. But uh, yeah, both of these doors do come out, but this one doesn't come out fully. Uh, I think it's supposed to be like uh, it's showing the air, the door coming out, but it's not completely on the ground. But uh, yeah, this is um, like this. I don't know if that only the, it appears that only the back of the aircraft is hollow. As you guys can see, it appears that only uh, the back of the aircraft is hollow. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, this is pretty good on Gemini's part. This model is very, very good on Gemini's part. Now, uh... This is a very interesting model, and just like the C5 Galaxy uh, up there, the C17 actually is also divided into two decks. You have, uh, but compared to the C5, which has a larger passenger deck on the top of the aircraft, uh, the C17, uh, it has a much larger uh, cargo deck on the bottom and a much smaller passenger deck, as you guys can see. But I don't know why on the model it shows that uh, the for the second floor of the aircraft for this focuses it shows like lines like this i don't know what this is supposed to mean is it supposed to mean like an unpainted door or something but um yeah i i i really don't know but uh and also this the, I, I don't know if this is a fault on gemini's part or if it's actually real life to its counterpart but uh yeah these models um are very interesting in the fact that uh these models are from gemini's better days um, what I mean by that is this is before the days when we had the E-175s with the United E-175s. This is before 
all of that Gemini drama and before Gemini's quality started to go really, really, really downhill. But, uh, yeah. In terms of the metal stands, I honestly am very, very, very surprised because uh, this is almost a two and a half, three pound C5 Galaxy because it's die cast metal. And uh, the aluminum stand is actually holding the model up. Um, now, I'll show you guys on the actual model. Here on the model, you have this rubber uh, in the hole. It has rubber, so that way uh, the model doesn't spin around. And I don't know why the Gemini didn't do that with the uh, C17, but this one spins around because all it is is a metal hole, and it, it's extremely loose. Like, I'll show you guys, look. I can literally spin it around. Like, I don't even need to bother. Like, I can just spin it around. So. That's something that Gemini should improve on their uh, metal stands. But uh, yeah, let's focus on the metal stands for a little bit. The metal stands, they really aren't interesting. They're just normal Gemini, just metal stands. And I'm honestly surprised that Gemini was able to uh, get it right with these metal stands. As in, they were able to actually hold a 3-pound C17, uh, C5 Galaxy on it. But uh, yeah. This Gemini Max unboxing has really left a positive taste in my mouth, and I honestly think that I'm going to collect more Gemini Max models in the future. But uh, yeah, that being said, that does conclude this video. If you guys like the video, please like, subscribe, turn the notification bell, share my videos, and comment down below what you guys think of my videos and what I should improve in my videos. Once again, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, goodbye.